Hi, I'm so glad to see you today. And today we're working on our Presbyterian Women's Study of Sacred Encounters. And we are on Lesson 3, A Bleeding Woman Encounters Christ. And I wanted us to start with the scripture today, which is found on page uh, 30 of your book. And it's from Luke 8, verses 43 through 48. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years, and though she had spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure her. She came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his clothes, and immediately her hemorrhage stopped. Then Jesus asked, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds surround you and press in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I noticed that power had gone out from me. When the woman saw that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling. And falling down before him, she declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Such a beautiful story. And this was a pretty long day for Jesus, um, which we're going to talk about in a second. But let's look at the picture first. Mm -hmm. Here we go. It's a great image. You can see... Jesus taking a step forward, you see the flow of his uh, robe kind of mixed in with the sky and surrounding. And then you see this hand desperately grasping at whatever thread she can catch of his hem. And the, red, the hand is kind of reddish, which is uh, to me symbolic of the woman's physical issue of hemorrhaging. Such a beautiful image almost a fleeting kind of feel to it. So let's start with opening prayer on page 29. O Lord and master of my life, spare me from the spirit of apathy and meddling, of idle chatter and love of power. Instead, grant to me, your servant, the spirit of integrity and humility, of patience and love. Yes, O oh Lord and God, grant me the grace to be aware of my sins and not to judge others, for you are blessed now and ever and forever. Amen. These prayers in this series have been fantastic. This one's from Ephraim the Syrian, um, from way back, just a, a few hundred years after Jesus. Um, so... What we were talking about was Jesus was having a really long day, and we've talked about part of it earlier. Uh, this was the day that Jesus was out in the boat sleeping, and the, a storm came up, and the crew, the uh, disciples were just so nervous, and they're like, Jesus, how can you sleep? We're going to die. And Jesus is like, oh, bless you. And he calms the storm. And then they, they um, hit land, and Jesus steps out of the boat and is immediately met by the demoniac from Gerasene. And so then we had that story a few weeks ago, months ago. And then after that, the boat sets off again and he comes into this area and he's walking and there's a crowd around him. Uh, in Matthew, it tells us, Matthew 14, 35 through 36, it tells us that people would just come and flock to him to try to touch his, any hem or remnant of his fabric to be healed and that they would be healed. And um, so as he's going through this crowd, this guy who is... Um, has connections with the temple, um, came to him, Jairus, and he falls down at Jesus' feet and calls out to him and says, please, my daughter is sick. She's dying. Please heal her. And Jesus says, yes, take me to your house. Well, on the way is where this story happens. And um, it's an interruption to Jesus' mission to heal this daughter. And so um, what we have is, uh, a woman who has been suffering for 12 years with hemorrhaging, constant bleeding. And uh, they imagine this was the kind, that is the, the female kind, that just was nonstop. I mean, obviously something was wrong. And she used all her money to go to doctors. She even tried magicians. Nobody could help her. 
Um, if she was Jewish and we're not sure she was, there would have been an uncleanness to her. People would have kind of, uh, they wouldn't have been able to touch her. Men wouldn't have been able to approach her or she to approach men. Uh, she would have to, anyone who was around her and touched her would have to be unclean the rest of the day and then bathe that night. She had to to do these uh, herself. So this was probably not only a very physical burden, where it also, when you hemorrhage that much, you lose iron, you have no energy, and you're sick, and you, nothing will help you, and you're worried, and maybe you're dying. And so the mental stress and anguish are rough too. And so all this is, is turmoil inside this woman, and she is desperate. And Jesus happens to be in town. And this woman, who should not culturally approach it's not acceptable for her to approach a man. So what she does is she covertly goes in among the crowd and finds her way to Jesus as secretly as she can. And she just secretly touches the hem of his garment and she's healed. And I'm sure she kind of backs away. Mission accomplished. Great day. Until Jesus stops. And in the throng of this crowd, right in the midst, he says, who touched me? And his disciples are like, everybody. He's like, no, I felt the power go out of me. Who touched me? And at this point, the woman who has tried to be so secretive and has tried to advocate for herself and, and not make a big deal of it in her desperation, she comes forward. And she now falls to her feet and addresses Jesus, says it was me. And Jesus then says, daughter, which is a very intimate term. It indicates family. He says, daughter, your faith has made you well. He claims her. He lets her stop feeling ashamed and stop feeling desperate and stop feeling like she did something wrong. And instead now, she's part of Jesus' family. Oh, what a beautiful story. Just fantastic story. And then Jesus goes on and heals Jairus' daughter as well. Um, so um, one of the neat things to look at is what, how Jairus in, uh, encounters Jesus and how uh, this woman encounters Jesus. So Jairus is up front. He falls on his knees. He pleads for his daughter. He's very open about everything. The woman in the beginning, very secretive. Uh, nobody can know what I'm doing because it's wrong. And I'll just take what I can and go until Jesus encounters her. And then she too falls on her knees in front of Jesus. She too addresses him and is open with him. Her secret is out, and she too is healed and claimed. So these are just some beautiful pieces of this story. And um, the, the theme for this lesson this week is that Jesus calls us out of the shadows and claims us as his own. And so we women have a history. Uh, today, things are so much better than they used to be, but we come from a long history of a patriarchal society in which women are less than. Certainly in the time of Jesus and early on, um, men were the people who made the decisions, the people in leadership, the people who uh, led the household, protected, provider, all that. Um, and those are not bad things, except that for women, we were subjugated into um, roles that are also good things, but I guess the idea is that we didn't have a choice. This was what is expected of us. And so women were around the house. They were the caretakers of the children, and uh, which are wonderful things. Um, but, you know, if they wanted to lead or, or if they had been valued for their opinions and their thoughts and their strengths, uh, that would have made it better. And that is what we have been working on into this age. Um, and so it gave us several examples in our uh, reading about people who went against the grain uh, to stand up and, and participate as women in areas where um, men have been um, or ha where men have fallen short and we women have picked up the slack. 
So these are some neat things to see. And I think that one conversation would that be interesting for each circle uh, that reads this is, you know, depending on the ages in your circle, what have you seen progress for women uh, in your lifetime? Uh, in my lifetime, I watched my mom, who was one of the first uh, Methodist pastors uh, in South Carolina. I think she was the first woman ordained a deacon in South Carolina. And, uh, and she was also, um, you know, my mom and took care of the kids and uh, worked around the house while she was also going to school and, and working at a church. And she did it all. And so did my dad. But, um, but she met with um, conflict at some churches who didn't, didn't want a woman. They weren't prepared for that. They didn't know if it was right. It was going to be kind of weird. How can this woman lead us? Yada, yada. And so I saw that uh, firsthand. Uh, with my mom. And so um, some churches, one church, you know, kind of took her because they, you know, they felt like they had to. They ended up loving her to death. And, and I was so happy by that. And that was so affirming for her. And um, other churches did not want her. And then we went to the Caribbean and uh, they were so short on preachers, she got five churches. She would do three on one Sunday and two on the next. And, and that was also affirming. God placed her where she needed to be to get the affirmation to be who he called her to be. And so that's a great story that just echoes what happened here, that we women need to know that God claims us and he uses us for his purpose, whatever that may be. And whether we are in the home and with our children, which is a fabulous place to be, or whether we are in the workplace and at home, um, or whether we are um, striving for charities or striving for um, our communities and governments or for international causes or schools or wherever we are, that we realize God claims us and he uses us. And, uh, and, and, and in such, he empowers us. He empowered that woman. She was healed, and he empowered her to be able to own up to what she was trying to keep secret. And so all these things give us lots of food for thought um, from this story. So let's close with the prayer on page uh, 33, and hopefully you'll have some good discussion about this. And um, the prayer is this. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will. All I have and call my own, you have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Amen. And that's by Ignatius of Loyola. I hope y'all have a great time discussing this, and I uh, can't wait to see you soon.